So here's the situation. I'm getting horrible cuts from my angle grinder because my cutoff wheels are done. I have a couple of old ones, but they're already used. And I don't have the depth of cut that I need to get a nice cut on this square section. I should just get rid of these ones and go up to the shops and buy new ones. But we're in lockdown. Nothing's open. So these are my only choices. This is a 5 inch grinder, but I only have about 4 inches left. There's enough to make this cut, but with the blade guard on, it only just makes it. If I leave the blade guard on, I can probably get one or two cuts before the wheel gets too small to get through in a single pass. Then I'll have to start cutting from one side through as far as I can get, and then I'll have to flip it and cut from the other side. And doing that handheld is a recipe for disaster. I need one of those fancy jigs that takes an angle grinder and turns it into a cutoff saw. But I don't want to spend time making a fancy jig. I just want to get on with my job. I've got a problem that needs a solution. I don't want to create a solution and then go looking for a problem. So I need something simple. So I fished around in the scrap bin and I found a few pieces of MDF and a few scraps of plywood. In normal circumstances, I prefer to have the handle on the left. If I'm cutting, I'll hold the handle in my right hand and just hold the grip with my left hand and cut like this. I'm definitely a blade left kind of guy, so I'd like to keep this configuration for any jig that I come up with. So if I'm going to use this thing as a cutoff saw, I'm going to want to have the blade vertical and 90 degrees to the workpiece. Something like this. I'll have to move the guard around and eventually, because I can't get out to buy new wheels, I'm going to have to take the guard off. But in normal usage, I would like to have the guard on. Something like this. So I have to find a way to get the blade 90 degrees to the work surface and get it to pivot up and down along this axis, like this. The simplest way that I can think of to get something to pivot up and down is just to put it onto a piece of wood and pivot like this. I can easily achieve this by screwing these two hinges onto the ends here. I'm going to use two hinges because just using one introduces a a potential for a bit of play in the hinge. With two of them, I'm not going to get much movement side to side at all. The angle grinder is threaded for the handle on both sides, so the obvious approach would be to find a bolt that can go in there from underneath this piece of wood here. I hunted around high and low in my workshop and all I could find was this one which is too long and this one which is too short. But anyway, I thought I would just have a look and see what I could do with these bolts. And when I took the handle off, I noticed that the threads are not 90 degrees. They are kind of angled with the head of the grinder here. So that would mean drilling an awkwardly angled hole in my board and then trying to figure out what to do with this bolt that's too short anyway. So I ended up giving up on that idea. And now the question is, well, how do I get it to sit on the board and, and keep the blade at 90 degrees? And that's when I realized that just setting it down on the battery actually does uh, a fairly good job of that already. When I say it does a fairly good job of that, I'll explain what I mean. It would keep the grinder completely flat if it weren't for this bit of play in the battery. For now, in principle, if we assume a good tight connection between the battery and the body, we do have the blade at 90 degrees. The next thing I have to figure out is how to keep the blade straight. 
just looking at it, it appears that the main part of the body here runs parallel to the uh, the plane of the blade. So I'm just going to put a block in there and push that body up against it. If I put one there and I put one there, I sandwich the body in between these two, that's going to hold it nice and straight, at least up at this end. And I'm going to figure out some way of stopping it from wiggling around at this end. I think I have something in here that might be useful. Let's take a look. Uh -huh. So this U-bolt here is the perfect radius for the body of the grinder and it's also about the right height as well. But the problem is, is that the wing nuts on the bottom wouldn't enable me to get this down flat. They'd be in the way and it would stick up. So. I don't think that's going to be very useful, unfortunately. These little brackets here could be perfect because they fit right in there and just hold it without taking up a large footprint. I think these might be pretty useful. So just playing around with this U-bolt again a bit more, I realized that I could put it through this way and then put some sort of board on the end of it somewhere uh, like in here and, and it comes through it comes through a little bit I could force snare a bit out a, a recess for it to do up but I'm not sure I kind of like the idea and that would pull it up against this board and hold it really nice and secure and going back to my original idea of having this here and this here, just having it held down and in place there. These brackets here would be ideal and that sits really nicely in there, but there's no room underneath to put a screw or a bolt to hold this on. So I'm kind of going away from that idea. Something like that would work. Now I've made a decision. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this corner here where it just sits in there behind the blade.
At the start of this video, I said I wanted something super simple. And this U-bolt is rock solid. It won't move a millimetre. And it's square. And when I put the hinges on, I'm going to be able to lift it up by the handle. And it's not going to move. I was going to go and put some T-nuts underneath there and put some threaded rod through. And lock it down with this kind of a plate thing over the top. But I really don't think I need that. Nor do I think I need these little hinges or, or these little brackets. So I'm just going to go with this. nice and square and I guess you could say this is the proverbial moment of truth bzz, bzz, bzz. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe with the notification bell turned on.